Welcome, I'm Darren and I'll be your guide today as I look at the basketball cards made by Action Packed. Now, when you think back about different card brands that are associated just with one sport, there are a couple of card brands like Collector's Edge and Philadelphia that really do get attached to one particular sport because they did basically nothing else. With Edge, they did a little bit of college basketball, but hardly anything at all. Then you have companies like Wildcard that also got a little bit into, a little bit more into stuff outside of the NFL. But Action Packed is another one of these brands that really is just a one sport affair, except for the fact that one, they did do a couple of NASCAR years, but two, they did branch out to basketball and baseball, just not major league. That was the big thing about Action Packed was the fact they only got associated with one major league, well two, with NASCAR. But the NFL, they did full-blown cards with them, and with NASCAR, they did full-blown cards. With hockey, they never got anything started, but it wasn't for lack of trying with baseball and with basketball. They did, in fact, do test sets. And with the basketball set, it was done in 1990 after they had done their full first official release in football, and the action pack cards for basketball were done in exactly the same way. Basically, they made three promo cards, one with Michael Jordan, one with Magic Johnson, and one with Patrick Ewing. And the cards do a really good job of showing you just what Action Packed was, how they built their cards. They wanted to do a card that was very much three-dimensional, but not done with like a hologram or a lenticular design. They wanted to do an actual three-dimensional card using something called embossing. And what embossing is, is you take a surface and then you extrude it up. You push it up in order to create a relief on it so that on the front, it actually moves up and down and for a picture of a player, then that means that the player actually, the, the actual form of the body, the ripples in the jersey, all of that is actually their contours on the surface of the card. And if you want to see what embossing really looks like, you can always look at Topps, 1994 Topps embossed, because those cards were done strictly as an embossing. The problem with embossing is that while on the top you have the relief, on the bottom you have a concave surface. And that concave surface, can it can be kind of distracting so what action pack decided to do was to hide it so they made a double wide card and then they folded the ends around and completely enclosed the whole back of the card so that on the top you have relief and then you curl around on some really nice smooth curves and then around to the back side it's all flat and they were really tricky in how they did this because not only did they fold it around but they planned how that would work on the card back so instead of being a perfect fold where both sides are even, they actually shifted it so that one side was larger and the other side was smaller. And down on the bottom of the card, you can see that the seam is just above the big box where they have for autographs. They also have the logos and the card number down there on the bottom, just in that little strip. And then up in the bigger area, you have a completely unencumbered area with the picture. You have the vital statistics of the player. You have all of the history, the, the write-up about the player. All of that is in one single panel. So the design was really well thought out, and these cards were really cool. The, the fact that they actually did have the relief was an addition to these cards that was really amazing. And when they came out in 1990, they were not a game changer, but they established another definition of what high watermark cards were going to be competing with, how, how crazy the, the 90s were going to be in terms of just interesting ideas. With basketball, it would have been nice for them to actually make these sets because it would have been neat to see what the basketball cards would have looked like. I think it would have been a really impressive result of just regular NBA cards, but they were pretty difficult to, to deal with because since they're so thick, they don't fit into top loaders. Some people used to, because top loaders used to originally come in one size because there was only one thickness of card originally, and you would just destroy them putting in there. Now they have top loaders of different sizes and you have different kinds of cases that you can get, so you can protect them a lot more easily, but they, they were difficult to work with. Frankly, they are still difficult to work with, but they do look neat. In 1990, it, was, it wasn't all that great because that big gold border around the outside was a little bit overpowering. But overall, the card opportunity was amazing and the 91 cards for football were fantastic. With basketball, they never got these cards going. They made the test set and then they basically walked away from it. But in 1993, they were able to make a deal with the NBA and the Hall of Fame. So while they didn't get a deal with the NBA Players Association, they were able to make basketball cards. It's just retired players. So this set is, 
it's two sets. It's Series 1, Series 2, both 42 cards. And these are only looking at veterans, like I said, veterans and coaches, so Hall of Fame players. And the set is a full bleed card. By that time, they'd, they'd pretty much gotten down to doing that. And with with basketball, it can be difficult to make a really good full bleed card. In the case of these pictures, especially with older pictures, when you get into sepia, everything can kind of run together, but they, they came up with a really great idea for this. So they made the whole background a matte finish, and then the player is a glossy finish all along the same contours, but that meant that the glossy portion really kind of stands apart from the background. And that meant that whenever you look at the, almost every single card, whenever you look at the card, it's the player or the coach that really stands out. Now they do have some gold in it, but the gold's not overpowering. A little bit of gold text at the bottom for the player and the position. And then on a strip, kind of along the side is the Basketball Hall of Fame logo and a big banner for Basketball Hall of Fame. And then the Action Pack logo up at the top, but it, it's not overpowering. It actually sits very well with the player within the card. So these cards were extremely well designed. And the backs are even more fun because while all the statistics aren't aren't really, they don't grab you, they don't have a mug shot back there, some of the things that really make a card back look good, it's kind of bland in terms of how it's laid out. They played one trick where since they got rid of the autograph patch, they moved the seam to the top of the card rather than the bottom, which meant they could have the player name and the vitals up above the seam, and then down below they could have just the totals and the highlights. And so it it was good thinking, but what makes this card back great is the parquet floor background behind the text. I wish that the actual detailing on the on the card, all the text and all that, I wish that was better designed, but it doesn't need to be because the parquet floor background is fantastic. So that was how they how they designed these cards, the front and the back. But the set is a pretty intricate set because they have a lot of things going on. They start off the set with one-on-one, -on -one, which looks at individual players, and they have a little, it, it's a matte finish of like a red or a blue, a little logo that says one-on-one -on -one down at the bottom of the card, one side or the other. And it's a string of Hall of Fame players. And then they have some coaches, some famous coaches, and then they have a series of five cards dedicated to Larry Bird's career. Then they finish up with some more players, and that's series one. Series two, it's more players, it's more coaches, and the set includes one of the few cards of Ann Meyer. Then a five card series dedicated to Dr. J. And then they close out with some of the players from the college years. These are players that are repeated from elsewhere in the set. And then they finish up with players who coach. So basically players who also were able to coach while being players. So it's that is basically the structure of the set. But this is action packed and they love to do gold cards, 24 karat gold cards. And they didn't do any of the of the mint cards that they had done in football where the whole card surface is, is gold. In this case, they just did the 24 karat gold, which is where they take all the gold foil and they replace it with 24 karat gold. They have a little 24 karat gold text above the Action Packed logo. That's the main way you can tell that these are 24 karat gold. You look at the Action Packed logo and look above it for the text. The other way is on the card back, it has a G number next to the card number. If it has those two, it's gold. But otherwise, they're entirely the same as the regular cards. And this is both Series 1 and Series 2 that they did this. So that was basically it. They didn't do any inserts, they didn't do any other parallels, and they really didn't do any special cards, with the exception of one. They did a promo card of Oscar Robertson, and this card is card number 24. And card number 24 in the set is actually Bob Wanzer. So you can tell that it's the promo for that, but you can also tell it's the promo because on the back, when you look at the, at the headers for the totals and the highlights, for the main cards, those are red and blue. Well, on the promo card, those are both in gold foil. So that's the other way, and really the easiest way that you can tell that it's a promo. But other than that, they just didn't do anything else for 1993. For 94, they came back and they did another set, basically the exact same set, but they built it in, in a different way. Now, this is a set that is 40 cards, only it's actually 38 cards that they ultimately released. And that was because they didn't do a Bob... Great, now I need to... Who was it? Bob Cousy and... Well prepared, aren't we? Bill Russell. Because they didn't release the Bob Cousy or Bill Russell cards in the main set. They left those for the autographs, which I'll get to in a second. But basically this was a 40 or 38 card set 
that looked at Hall of Fame players, and this was broken into three portions. They had the main players and coaches, and then they had a couple of Class of 94 Hall of Famers, so the new inductees, and then they had some greats of the game cards at the end. And Bill Walton ended up getting two cards in the set as a result of that. So that's how they built the set in terms of the layout, but the card design was very different because this time they went with a gold border around the outside, not kind of intricate like the 1991. This is a very, a very blunt version of it. And up at the top, they have a big gold band with the player name as kind of a void so that every single player of the player name, the image goes up into that text. So that, that's the way that the card was designed. And then they had the ba Basketball Hall of Fame logo down below. But pretty much that was it. With the exception of they also had an autograph in gold foil down at the bottom of the card. Now that is kind of the key to all of what we're about to talk about. So that's the way the set was. And the cards all look the same with the exception of the 94 Hall of Fame inductees, which were done with, the, the card had a green marble background, and then they had a big gold emblem, uh, kind of like a medallion with the face of the player in the, in the medallion. And this included Carol Blaszczowski, where in the previous set they had Ann Meyer. Well, here they have Carol Blaszczowski, who wasn't quite as famous because at least Ann had been drafted by the NBA. In this case, Carol hadn't, but it was another female player. Again, very rare that you encounter these cards, but she was in it. So she was one of the inductees. And those cards were the only ones that looked different. So otherwise the whole set was the same. Now they still had the gold parallel, but they also had an autograph parallel. And that is where the Bill Russell and the Bob Cousy cards, the only place where they showed up. So the way that they made the gold cards different from the regular cards was that the text for the player name was now all gold, but it was embossed. It, it kind of popped out. So that was, that was the biggest difference, the easiest way to tell. But the other way, the more reliable way, you know, other than the G on the back, is that the signature down at the bottom, which was in gold foil, now it's in red foil. Very strong, very distinctive red foil. The autograph cards are back to, there's no AU or A or anything like that. The number is identical. The text up at the top is identical, but the big difference there is they actually did not put a foil autograph. So they had the room for, for the silver pen autograph that each player used. So every single autograph on these cards is a silver pen autograph. They all have the same silver color. But the key is the fact that they do not have a, an autograph printed on it. If you see a card that has the silver, but it also has either gold or ruby foil, then that means that that is a fake or it's an in-person autograph, which I highly doubt that an in-person autograph happened with a silver pen. But the, the fact that the foil is gone is why, how you can tell that these are autographs. The autographs did come with a certificate of authenticity from Action Pact. So, you can find those. They aren't necessary because you can tell, you can find the guarantee that they're autographs. But that is the way that you could tell all of the differences. But you can tell with the class of 94 cards that there's a very clear difference between the gold foils. Now, obviously the gold foil and the 24 karat gold foil, there's gonna be a color because they're literally different metals. But you can also see that with the autographs, there's almost like a pewter color, at least with these cards. But the big difference is all three backgrounds are a different color. The, the regular gold is kind of a bluish color. The 24 karat gold is more of a, a pure green. And then the autographs are actually really blue. The only autographs that are truly clear are these autographs here with the class of 94. And that was basically the close for Action Packed in basketball. They really, they, they only made two sets and they made some promos and that was it they just didn't get into anywhere else. And they, they didn't really need to. It was a fun little thing that they did. And the fact that they didn't get into the actual NBA, just it limits the, the range that they had. But it is, I've always loved Action Packed. I've always thought that it's probably the, the most unique and the best idea for a main card ever made. I'd like to have seen more of it. They didn't do it. So this is basically the span of it. So. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, what you think about these cards, and subscribe if you haven't done already, if you haven't done so already, and thank you very much for watching.